My name's Chris Follows. I'm from the University of the Arts London. Um, I'm sitting down to keep it quite informal. Um, and I would like this presentation to be more of a, a sort of informal discussion um, and maybe try and raise some of the questions or debate some of the questions that have already come out of previous sessions. I know I just left the, the, the um, session about going viral and about interface design and, and towards the end of that there was like a whole field of questions that, that hopefully this, um, what I'm going to talk about today will start to explore or maybe even some answer or we'll look at towards some answers of that. I'm going to be talking about process art mainly, which I'll just, if you just Google process art, it should come up in the, in the top, pretty much the top rankings. And more generally about the open educational um, resources that we've been, uh, and, and being part of the UK OER programme. Uh, at University of Arts London and basically what, that, what that's meant over the last few years. So I'll go back in time. I, I've been at the university for seven years. Um, I was, I've been teaching there, um, doing vi video animation courses and things like that. I, I wanted to, for my teaching, I wanted to put stuff online and there was no facility at the institution to do that. Um, so I just did it myself. So I, I uh, just used whatever tools there was six years ago and started to put resources online and see how that helped my teaching and it, and it, was, it was helpful. Students enjoyed it. Um, so I sort of just carried on doing that basically. Um, and it got to the point where I was actually becoming more interested in the idea of putting stuff online and sharing and uh, the natural, the subject matter that I was teaching. So I, I, I sort of started looking at, at, at UAL as a whole and saying, well, how are we doing this? Because what, what I did was a secondment at one of the other colleges. So University of Arts London is made up of six colleges and they're scattered all over London. Within one of those colleges, there's, there's a culture of no one talking to each other, really, or no, no visible uh, sign of that happening and you can have two courses that are doing the same thing and producing the same materials and I thought well this is a bit odd there's no interaction between the six colleges although we're, we're sort of sold as a, as a unit, as a six college unit as an art school so that, that's what I was interested in uh, about how, how we can make better as, a, as an institution for sharing um, sharing amongst ourselves basically so I started a, a secondment, which I think a lot of these things come out of as secondment opportunities. I went to one of the other art schools and I saw it and I thought, well, this is amazing, this is another rich environment. When I go online, I don't get this, I don't get this experience. I, you know, I, this, it's all visual, there's no reason why it can't be trans translated. Um, and, you know, and, and I was looking at the other courses, animation course, and I was thinking, well, I'd love all the old resources. You know, that would make my job a whole, whole lot easier if I could reuse your resources. Uh, also, I've just produced a whole load of resources for this course. Why don't you use mine? Just reuse them. So, uh, so through the, a, a few secondments and doing a fellowship, I managed to work with the Centre for Learning, Teaching, Art and Design and start to develop process art, which um, was started its life as an as a institutional inside um, sort of web space for staff and students and that was the important thing that this wasn't just focused towards staff this was a place for staff and students to uh, log in using their, their um, passwords that, that they get for, for their VLE and their, you know, the same password so they don't have to create another password so it's part of the system and to basically Put information out there and, and maybe um, share results. Try and share resources. Now, I, th I think that's a, an easier, an easier thing to say than do. And I think we've just discovered that from some of the presentations that were on previously, because what this was about was not so much about representing courses as such, or uh, 
you know, hold course like we saw previously, where it's quite easy maybe to do a to do a, um, a course that can translate, can codify on onto a, an online platform. And I think that's where MIT have have been able to do that quite well, because a lot of their courses are chalk and board. They're they're all tech, a lot of text based. Um, where this really wanted to deal with the practice based, and and that's basically what it was and what it is. It's, it's about exploring practice and how we can use the digital or online video animations uh, and text and images uh, to uh, our advantage, basically. So it's, it's still um, not an institutional, and this is the other important thing, this is not an institutional site. As such, this is not um, this is not run by the institution. This is not um, supported as such by the institution, and it's basically just survived. Uh, well, what it got was a server, and the thing that's made it survive are the people that use it. So there's people like myself and other people that are that have sort of made this their home, and and that, that they sort of do things there. And they're part of the culture of this site, if you like. And that's what's made, made it go for the last two years. Now, in those two years, the University of Arts London was involved in a UK OER programme, the just the UK OER programme, which means a whole load of money comes in. And uh, the, 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 there was a, a series of institutional change, if you like, institutional impact of the OER was, was very much implanted into people's, in, into people's consciousness. And um, I think that made a big difference because that supported this, this, this initiative, if you like, or this grassroots initiative that was, that was already there. So through that, um, this ELTO, which is the ELTO project, this is Arts Learning and Teaching Online. And like I say, as part of the UK OER programme, a repository was built. And we used the EdShare, and this was brought up earlier on, we used the same Southampton EdShare e eBrints software in order to design a file store, which we called it. And it wasn't so much a repository. And I think that, that, was, the, that was the kind of terminology that we were trying to escape through the Alto project. And so the file store was uh, basically an adapted version of the ePrints, which is, is, is quite a, um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. It, do, it does a job as a repository. And we were aware of that, that this does, does a job as a, as a repository. But what we were also aware of is that the, it needs something else. And that something else is participation and also motivation and interaction and so how do you do that and in a way we already had it you know it, this this thing had formed itself it's 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 built on motivation and participation um so 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 i i guess what i would like to talk about is is, is basically what i think are the, are the elements that make this work and the, that make potentially open educational practice work because I'm not sure that a repository, just by having a repository, is the, is, is, is the answer. Because what happens there is that, one, that there can be quite clunky systems, these, these repository systems, and they can quickly go out of date. And with the speed of, of obviously, with techno technological developments, the, the repository can, as VLEs can be, our Blackboard site is, is so much out of date, it's got so much complaints, people don't want to use it. Why are people going to use stuff that's, 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 that's not, not, not easy to use? So, uh, th this was built out of, um, again, this was the, the other, out of Drupal as well, which is an open source software. And, again, it's it's, it's about having a, uh, an environment in order that, that, that can evolve. 
and using an open source uh, Drupal environment, there's there's already a, 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 a sort of already existing interest in Drupal or in open source within the institution, within the students. You know, they're, they're interested in these open source stuff. So, so what we've uh, come around to doing now is, is, and this has been very much about this being an in-house thing and not going out and buying, not going out and spending 50 grand on an outside developer. Well, why do that if you're, if you're a creative um, institution and, and you know, this is the stuff you should be doing, why not do it in-house? Why pay someone else? So we're, we're, we're looking at developing our own Drupal community of practice, our own in-house Drupal community of practice. And that involves students. So students are your developers, essentially. They gain experience, they gain um, uh, potentially future employability skills to take in, you know, because it's an industry standard. You, you know, you go into the, into the field and, and Drupal's industry standard. Um, if you're, like we say, if you're dealing in somewhere like the repository, um, you know, and something like Ed, EdShare, ePrints, how many students are going to want to learn Perl? Maybe some, but it's going to be harder to, to get a, a, maybe a, a mass community of practice uh, around, around Perl than it is Drupal. Okay, so I'll give you some, some sort of general uh, sort of walkthrough on, on the process hearts here. So obviously one of the other problems is, or has been, is, is how to uh, break, break all the, the practice stuff into sections and, and, and make things findable. Because um, one of the things also with, with this site is that it's not... UAL, and I think that these are the things that I've got a quite good to list. Is that it's this is not a University of Arts London site. This is open to anyone to come in, and we have uh, other universities on here, other individuals. We have industry on here as well, and I think that's the other important thing. So when they want to log in, they can create an account here, which is again a lot of the university devices do not allow you to create accounts. And again, what this spawned out of was, was people uh, within the institution ignoring the conventional VLE because it wasn't doing what they wanted it to do. They were going off and making blogs, making, which is great. So they're using the tools that, they, that work for them and are doing the job for them. But the problem is that, or the kind of problem that's happening is that we end up with them with this huge mass of stuff going on all over the place and then this kind of leads to confusion there's also other th things that are sort of tagged on to that is that when, when so a tutor creates a blog that tutor leaves the blog dies that, um, or suddenly all, all the a, a tutor creates something and that becomes a hell of a lot of demand for that, that tutor to, to keep that process, to keep it going on. So there was a, a sort of strong argument for making a, a sort of a similar sort of space within the institution or, or, or the, that we could use that would uh, bring, where everyone can come together and create those sorts of environments but, but depend on this sort of crowdsourcing, this, this idea of that, that everyone can contribute to that community. So we can create accounts. And as you see, we, we've sort of split it up into, into sections here. So um, as best we can. And it's, it sort of mirrors UAL's, um, UAL's sort of framework of, of, of the subjects that they do. But um, as, as people join the site, uh, we are adding to this. So it's, it's, it's totally agile, and then that is the other, the other important key thing of, the, of this space, is that it's totally agile. In the fact that um, we, we can pretty much make changes as and when. I, I, I make changes to this daily. Can you say me? Who actually Okay, <laughs> I was just about to say that, that this is probably something that I, sh I, should, I should say at the moment. So, okay, so this is still voluntary. This is, this is, uh, so, so when I say we, it's a good question. Okay, so this is still voluntary. I'm going to go to the bottom here, and you'll see that there's 92 people online, and there's 70 logged in users. 
17 logged in users at the moment. Okay, so that's active people using this, this space, a voluntary space. That's not, you know, uh, so, so when I say we, it's, it's basically the people that are volunteering to, to be part of this. So at the moment, when I say volunteering, I also looking at a sustainable model. We're, we're looking at ways of, of sustaining that. Uh, so we've got student developers. And so, so we've taken um, some students that are interested in Drupal and got them on board and they've, we give them some experience and um, they are now uh, developing the site as and when we wish. So for instance, I'll give you one scenario. Um, this is Fashion Colloquia. So this was, this was a collaboration between um, four, four art schools across the world, uh, fashion art, art schools across the world. And basically they, they wanted to uh, basically have the space for all their resources. Now he was looking at potentially spending you know, 20 odd thousand pounds to build a nice repository system and get a website developer to come in and, and do, his, do his stuff. Um, he came and spoke to us and said, look, can we do it on Process Arts? Yeah, why not? Um, how much is it going to cost? Maybe four days, student developer? 200 quid? You know, suddenly he's got, he's got a place for, for all, his, all his users to deposit all their resources from all the conferences. There's a conference every four months and all the resources get deposited. On here. These are all open educational resources. So... Um, or they, they should be, or they get the option. I'll, I'll, I'll go through and, and log in in a moment. So, so th this sort of came round to this idea of the project groups, and this is where we're clustering now around interests. Around, so not so much about subjects, and I think that this is the distinction. This is not about putting a course online. This is about putting an interest, a, a, a sort of bunch of inter a clustering interests. So that might be multiple courses or cross courses. So let's go to, which would be a good example. This is a student, uh, a teacher that basically wants to, he was running a blog and he was a bit dissatisfied with the, um, the experience of a blog. He found it very, just he was just putting stuff out there and wasn't, just wasn't really feeling the, the aura of, of doing it. Um, and getting the feedback and getting the sort of stuff he wanted. So he, so he, he road tested um, coming on to Process Science. Mm. And he, he's now a, a sort of convert into the open educational movement. When, when he came on, he, he, was, he, he, he was... He had no knowledge of open educational resources. But what he did have was a working experience of it. He would create... Uh, all his resources would be in his, his, his sketchbook, a bit like students, you know, but no, he made notes or he'd do printouts. And obviously he's moved into more digital, into more digital spaces now to create his resources. So when he first started, he was creating resources with no Creative Commons license. Um, as he's gone on, he's, he's now creating those resources um, with a, a, a buy license. And I think that, that this is basically what this space is. It's, it's almost like an uh, 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 attribution license, Creative Commons license. So, again, I'm just a uh, presumption that everyone knows what Creative Commons licenses are. Is, is there anyone that doesn't know what Creative Commons licenses are? So, so in a way, this is providing a, a space. And when, when it was originally conceived, it was, it was a place to share content and practice. And I was thinking content and practice is as course stuff. But actually what, what it is, is, about, is also about sharing pra open practice. And what we have here, from, from the stats and from the Google Analytics, which I, I, I tend not to, to fixate on too much, but when you've got 400 unique users sitting watching on the outside, um, you, you're then thinking, well, What's going on? What are they watching? What are they, what are they, so we, we did some surveys, and it was basically that's what they're doing. They're just observing. They're observing practice online. So this is quite a straightforward resource. It's text, an image, and so this is a bit skew with 
and there you go. And basically, it's all there. And you think, well, this is great. You know, I can use this in my workshop um, for my students. Um, oh, you want to copy it? Oh, look, there's a license down here that says exactly what I can do with that stuff. So, in a way, from this observational idea that people are sitting on the parameter and watching, so when, when they join, one of the questions they're asked is, do you know what a Creative Commons license is? Everyone sits, no, 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 on that. So what I normally do is follow it up and say, well, look, we've got some resources on here. Click on the link, and the tag link, which is building slowly, and there's a whole uh, load of nice resources explaining what Creative Commons license is. And what you see is that people come in, and again, it's, it's, it's almost like t uh, a place to just, just dip your toes. So you go in and, and you're like, well, you know, like comments don't happen. It's hard to get people to, to comment in these spaces or to participate in that way. Um, and then they, they might go into the realm of creating a resource. And then, again, that's quite a big thing for, for some people to actually put something out there into the world, uh, that's open to the world. But they can maybe just keep the license as a, as a, as a copyright license. And then uh, as they see others... Or, or they learn more about Creative Commons license and they say, and they start to understand it, they can change that license to, a, to whatever Creative Commons license they want, whether it's a non commercial, share alike um, sort of license. Do you think that the practitioners and teachers who contribute to process arts would be able to do it without the institutional structures which they were? sort of born out of, even though they were born out of it then because you didn't have a place to do this within the structure, it's still sort of, out of that frustration, you needed, you created your own space. <clears throat> but you still, do you still need that institutional structure in order to have this? Um, in, well, in a way, this has been used by others outside the institution. So, and this is the other key thing. <laughs> and we've got such a rich alumni that, uh, that are here for this three year and then they go off and and um, and they're lost they, there's no way for them to reconnect back or keep in touch or keep with the institution so we've got alumni on here and this is a place for them to, to reconnect and to uh, and also to give back because what they're doing is is um, supporting the first years so I went and did some some uh, some videos uh, and there's lots of video content on here. So, just to give you some rough stats, um, again, I'd have to think off the top of my head, but there's, there's around 500 resources. And a resource can be anything from a, um, from a sort of handout or maybe a video of a, of a, of a lecture. Or um, uh, there's lots of interviews of people talking about their practice because this is it this is what this is about this is about exploring how we do that hard stuff that soft stuff that tacit stuff and then um, because it's quite easy to put your lecture um, your um, presentation uh, essays up but it's a bit more difficult to transfer what a, uh, a crit is what a, uh, a, so a critique is to do assessment of the work sorry so it's more difficult to do assessment of the work well, there's no assessment on there, yeah. and again, the, 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 this is this is part of this space being a sort of free and uh, sort of non-institutional space almost, which I think is what makes it work a little bit, because we're not trying to recreate the VLE, and I think as soon as this starts to turn into a VLE, it's dead. It becomes something that's that it's not. But would, do you think it would be dead if there was no institution also? Um, well, uh, yeah, because it's kind of hard to say because in a way there's no institution because, like I say, it's not actually run, managed by the institution at the moment. But there's an interesting spin-off to this because we're, we're, the institution now want to adopt this, which is quite an interesting thing. Um, so um, th this could survive outside the institution, yes, to answer your question. I think, because it's based on interest, it's based on, and I think that's what a lot of the people are sitting on the perimeter, because it's interesting stuff, you know, there's, there's videos here that um, are fascinating, you know, because that is it, and that's the experience I got when I went to do my secondment at Chelsea College of Art, I, I was, you know, I was fascinated by what was going on inside the studios. And, you know, if we can transfer that 
that experience. And obviously, this has got to be more than a promotional experience. This has got to be a sort of practice experience. This has got to be a, a sort of a developmental experience. So, I'll just open this up. Yeah, and it's interesting what you're saying about that relationship between um, UAL and process arts because I, having looked at stuff online, I couldn't understand where also process arts, mm. and there's also an institutional repository of, of yeah. UAL as well. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't really understand how they... How it all works. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and, I mean, I can see, I mean, you can see the dynamism of process arts, and I, but also was something else and I, I yeah. still haven't got well, uh, well uh, this is the sort of uh, this is the irony in a way <laughs> right Alto was a funded project yeah. that bought Edshire and Leibniz and all that Process Arts has come out of nothing essentially it's come out of grassroots it's come out of interest it's come out of real need it's come out of, it's come out of a need so so in a way there's, there's, there's a, a sort of strange thing going on here but, but what Alto did also supported this project, this process arts project, because what it did is put OER on, on the institutional agenda. Now that's important, because I don't think if that hadn't happened... Now, but Alto also produced a, this standard repository system, which is going to be hard to maintain, to crank, to go, to, you know, that's another whole... You need probably another £200,000 or another, you know, X amount of money to, to maybe keep that going or, or crank it up. Uh, but you've got an environment here that's potentially just, just doing itself. And it, it literally does run itself. Um, many more stuff. They've got sort of uh, yeah, uh, which that means you can sort of punch air into them. Um, any problem there, so you've got to match the colour and make them look because if they want them for anything. Um, the hair in the face of that one is um, actual beard hair. <laughs> So you get the right thickness uh, for a bit and you shake it off and then you punch your head and you um, The eyebrows, uh, chest hair, because you need a taper on your each hair, and it looks strange, so that's the chest hair. Um, and the eyes... Who's chest hair? Sorry. Have you always... Yeah. Sorry, the name's just in the height, kind of... Uh, okay, so later on he gets interviewed in the studio as well. So, <laughs> Okay, so this is fascinating stuff. This is fascinating stuff to anyone. You know, people just go on here because it's just inter it's really interesting. So we've got ceramics on here. We've got we've got a whole load of stuff. So I, I just um, would uh, recommend you go and have a have a have a, have a nose around basically. And and, um, and people just keep coming up to me and saying I'm hooked. I'm just hooked on this space. So and obviously the the the, the way that this impacts on courses is quite interesting and we're just starting to see that now so rather than the courses coming onto this this is starting to impact on the course so for instance i mean the early indicator was that, that something like this was great for the first year students because they could they could actually really get an insight into the third years into doing their final show and they're almost thinking of their final show or seeing their final show the processes involved before they get there and they're getting tips, just little tips that are sneaking in there. Like, where do you get your eyes from? Oh, Moreland Hospital, Glass Art Age, you know. It's great, you know. They've got all these sort of uh, tips being passed down before, before these, these students go off. Can I just start? Yeah. Sorry, who, is there any control that they can put stuff up? But is there a, people who just choose just and chuck stuff up? Good question. And, 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 and I think that this is part of the, part of the, um, part of the process of this evolving and being agile, and I think is also part of the process of it turning or becoming an institutionally supported project. Um, so at the moment, for instance, uh, okay, so this, this was the first sort of course, the SALTAD teaching development project, this was the first sort of official looking course thing that went on to, to, the, to process art, which is kind of a, a little bit against its grain in a way because it, it felt very coursey, very sort of academic -y. And basically this is what was absolutely amazing. It was basically 60 videos of, um, of, of uh, self-reflection of staff talking about their practice 
How amazing for students to see that. Um, and so it's a case of the content that's going on is, is literally, I, 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 there's just been another 20 videos go up and there have been more about students' work, students' videos. And I was thinking, well, you know, should they go on? You know, are they about process? Is it about process? But in a way, I think just, just for, for someone to log in, to upload a video, and this is the other thing, that they don't have to go to YouTube. They don't have to go to Vimeo. They don't have to go outside the institution. This is offering a place for them to, to maybe a sort of a sort of safe place, if you like, to to test out putting stuff online without go, making that commitment out. But also putting stuff online within your professional world, which is you know you're not putting it into your private world or into your into your private public world. <clears throat> so so in a way, at the moment, to answer your question, content is allowed to go on. It's being monitored by the community as such. Well, if, if anything comes up that's inappropriate, it's, there's a flagging device you can flag it, as you can with most Web2 stuff. But I pretty much, um, content goes straight up. If you're logged in, you can put content straight up. There's no moderation of content. Comments, anyone can comment. If you're not logged in, you, the moderation of comments happens. And I, well, I do that at the moment. Obviously, going into an institutional, into institutional support, What's that going to do to this site? What it's going to do is give it stability. It's actually going to hopefully uh, give it a bit of longevity as well. But what we're negotiating with UAL is that this will not actually be a, an institutional site as such. It will still be this organic, um, it'll be allowed to be its, what it is. And it'll be one foot in the institution, one foot out of the institution. So in a way, this could be taken on by anyone by a business or anything. So I think it's better it's, it's maybe managed and run by an institution or even maybe a, um, a, a collection of institutions that could take ownership for this as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a site, basically. But there's also the potential here, which we've done already with the Vietnam Project at the University of Arsenal, where we've taken the code, the Drupal code, and we've copied it um, and reused it. So this, this whole site infrastructure can be given away for free and it is, it's ready to take. So if an institution wants this for their locally to develop their own local communities, they can take this code and implement it and redress it, rebrand it, rename it. They can even take all the resources because it's all where we are. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, so... Oh, no, I was just going to ask you, obviously... The site has been a space for people to upload reflective parts of their course. You know, that, that we is, it, is it going the other way? Are there, is anyone using clips and resources that are up on the site and embedding it into curricula in any institutions? I, I, is it still more of a fan site at the moment? I, I guess it's, 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 um, it's sort of a, it's hard to know. Because, like I say, it's totally voluntary. It's, it's the, 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 in a way, I've been doing, I've been doing a score fellowship. A part of my score fellowship, sorry, it's just crass. No, we, we did, was to explore all these issues. And, and at the moment, I'm going to spend the next month um, really sort of unpacking all that and started to have some of those answers. Because I think that what, what there is in here are lots of... Lots of, um, lots of little mini case studies or mini examples... Of, of open practice, and I think that's you know I could probably spend the next year on doing you know translating all that. So so the, the the other thing is that obviously a lot of this content that goes so if you upload a video you can embed that elsewhere, you know you know so you can have your your sort of your main piece of content living on Process Arts and embedded elsewhere, but vice versa obviously you can embed. So we've put videos from here onto YouTube, and one of the most successful ones, which is almost like the viral thing, which was uh, sandcasting. You know, it's uh, you know, 150, 200,000 hits now for a sandcasting tutorial. And the most amazing comment, and this is the, this is the bit what I want to explore now, is the, this idea of engagement through comments, through 
Because that's why Steve Wood, one of the tutors that's on here doing the metal work, wanted to be on here. He wanted to be on here for interaction, for, um, <coughs> for that aspect, that, those sort of aspects. And I think, again, that's another step for people to take. And I think um, maybe people are used to, I mean, I don't know about yourselves, but I have so many great conversations in my email box. And it's all buried away, and I was thinking, oh, God, if this was open, we could involve, I could get this person in, I'll get this person in. So maybe there should be more open conversation or open debate. So, so to do that, we, we've introduced a forum. So do you embed those videos separately into YouTube, or are they automatically indexed by YouTube? Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's done manually. So, okay. um, so, so and, and again, this is, again, looking at the way institutions are handling their content, because, like, as was said in this morning's presentation, there's, there's, um, there's, you know, we're going to be handling a lot of video. Okay, so I, I, a lot of resources, I'm seeing more and more tutors showing videos or whatever, and that pops an advert. And it's almost like we're in a sort of a teaching and advertising at the same time. And because there's nowhere else to go, where else are you going to put the videos? There's nowhere for, for staff and students to put their videos. They've got to go on YouTube. And they've got to go into these spaces. It happened with Second Life which was the virtual um, 3D world. And, you know, they, they had an educational space to get you all in. And then since once everyone was in, they said, well, actually, we're going to put, in, we're going to put this charging system in there. And it's like, you know... It's... So, so in, a, in a way, and this kind of goes back to, you know, what are we doing as institutions to develop our own networks, our own um, media networks? And I don't think we're, I, I see, don't see very many examples of, of that happening. You know the technical tutorials like the sandcasting? Yeah. Is that made for this space? Was, I mean, for example, is that, would the actual tutorial happen anyway? And then somebody's just filmed it and then it's been recorded there? Or is it made for this space? A, a bit of a combination of, of both, actually, because, um, so for instance, the sandcasting. The first one, which was the, the basic introduction to sandcasting, was, was very much a, a, um, a orchestrated thing in the fact that I went along with the video and recorded this uh, member of staff who was not that confident, obviously, with technical stuff, and it all started off a bit sort of difficult. Um, and then he just went into flow and he did it, he was doing what he loved. And that comes out in the videos, amazing. And then we did a follow up one, which was uh, to do core casting, which was, was something we said that we came out of that video. We said, oh, it'd be good to do a core casting video. So we did that, and that was more of me as, as an almost observational, t taking more of an observational. Uh, aspect and, and again some of the feedback and this is where the feedback comes in quite handy so the feedback from that was like oh I would have liked more on the core casting more information, more talking like, you know, at the, I, I was there almost as a visitor recording as much stuff as I could get and they were all really good but there was elements of that video missing that wasn't in the first one which was very instructional, you know, lots of information lots of details then we've got a scenario of the life drawing class so I, uh, the life the model was up for it, the tutor was up for it, the students were up for it. I, came, I went in with a camera and I just recorded the live training class and um, obviously blurred the model out. The, the tutor actually did a drawing. I've never seen him draw. It's like, you know, so I've never been in a live training class. Before. It's amazing, he can draw. And uh, it, it, is, it is absolutely fantastic. But there was four live drawing classes going on and some people wanted to be in Lawrence's class but they couldn't because they'd been separated. And the feedback from the students was, it was great. I got to see Lauren do his live drawing class. You know, which they wouldn't have had the opportunity to have done that. So, yeah, there's different scenarios. And then there's, there's students filming each other, which is another example on here. And I think this is the kind of case studies that I need to sort of unpack and do examples of. So, uh, yeah, students with cameras just filming each other and asking each other questions and putting that up as well. Feel free to ask away questions. I'm going to try and get this. Uh... Are you able to track links then between videos that are like the sound video and maybe recruitment to those programs? Um, this morning about marketing. Yeah, I think um, 
there's there's no such there's no such evidence of of that other than this is popular yeah. and that you know like you know the Sandcastle video has got two hundred thousand two hundred thousand hits and it's associated to UAM. But that was that you know there's an increase in inquiries in the program. Uh, again, it's almost impossible to in, in, unless. I, th I think unless, uh, it, like I say, this not being officially an official project as such, I think it's it's like who's going to do that? Who's going to make those inquiries? Who's going to find that out? Who's try it? I, I guess that's the other part of this becoming an institutional, uh, taking some institutional ownership, is that they can say, well, you know, that, and this goes back to development. This has been not developed. This is just little bits of development I'm doing that the student does. But as soon as we come into an institutional thing, we can actually do all the things that we really want to do. And um, I think that, that will make a big difference as well, because it is, it's, it's, it's not as it should be, but it does the job. And if it's working, as, if it's working at that level, uh, so if you start to apply the, the sort of things that were said in the earlier um, discussion about making things more accessible and improving interfaces and being agile and doing all that, then it, that should, should be successful as well. Can I ask who's funded your time to set this up there? Because funding it has to come from somewhere. And you say it's free, it's happened from nowhere. Yeah. But time... Time isn't free. <laughs> no, so, yeah, so... Um, OK, so over the period of two years that it's been running, it's part of my practice. I've implemented it as part of my practice, it's part of, it's part of my development. Um, it enabled me to get a school fellowship, um, which was the, the Open University Fellowship Scheme, uh, which meant I could spend at least a day or two a week on what I did for that was to develop the community side of it and the community aspect. And there's a real impact in the in the stats, uh, you know, by introducing and having and, and looking at the engagement of the site and seeing how those they suddenly shoots up because there's more engagement. And so what's happening now is that I am basically filled in, and I've obviously been in OER, I've been, I was involved in the, in the Alto project, and, the, and you know, so I've been involved in those processes and, and this has been a, a part of my practice as such. So is there any more questions? I mean, I've just been talking way too much. Well, I from, I'm a librarian, so from my perspective, it's interesting to see how practitioners took this space to create a library, basically. These are resources that you can refer people to. <clears throat> and how you did it, sort of, you did it without the library. It, and I just sort of wonder if that's because libraries are, are traditionally um, so text-based and technologically, I would say, maybe retrograde. <coughs> they're, also, they're also repository focused. I mean, the difference yeah. between this and yeah. Alto highlights, you can see the library over in the Alto perspective, whereas this is more over in the, I suppose, I don't know, learning, teaching, interacting, yeah. engaging. Yeah. So, but I mean, I think the nice thing to do would be to drag the library over yeah. into there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. There's a Wikipedia situation where everybody contributes to the library. It's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. but, to, to answer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we have actually got the library coming in there because the library are doing the 23 things of, of uh, information literacy and they're going to do this on here. But, so that's, that's good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, just a quick thing on profiles. So, the, the other aspect of this, of course, is that people are starting to build their profiles. Because um, obviously, everything starts to cluster together. Um, so what I've got on here for my profile, I've got all my presentations on here, I've got all my learning materials, I've got all my uh, open educational practice research, it's all on here. There's an observation um, in relation to the yeah. idea of the library or Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a knowledge base, it's practice based. Yeah, that's yeah. Not yeah. Significant, but it's yeah. not, it's a supplement in a sense, so that students or practitioners can see an example and then go and do, yeah. rather than... That the knowledge is it. There's yeah. something to follow up. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and um, and and it is almost just showing that you know that, that we're all working this out together. No one's got the answers, and it is a case of you know like this is this is just great to see. And um, I think also it's not a surprise really that something like the casting is really popular. With and I can't speak for all places, but the Scottish Film Festival is certainly um, universities that I've worked in in the art department and fine art when. The idea of technical workshops is kind of dying out, showing students skills. Yeah. I'm not surprised then that that casting video is like your mm. the most popular one. Yeah. And and the kind of the fact that you know students from all over the place can go and look at that because you, you wouldn't a lot of places nowadays in generalising you wouldn't be taught that as a skill. Exactly. So you can actually go and access it here. Yeah, exactly, and and um, and also as the potential to revitalise it, and and I think that's the case with ceramics. Is that um, again? There's lots of ceramic stuff on here, or there's some ceramic stuff, and there's going to be a lot more. And you know, um, so for instance, I mean, we all got made redundant. I was working at FE, and I got made redundant as well. So in a way, if I hadn't started doing this, this gave me a new job, and it gave me, I almost carved a new career, <laughs> which was lucky because I got made redundant in the FE. Amanda now, she, she's specialising in open in uh, OER ceramics stuff for Alto UK. Great. You know, this has given her a new career path, if you like. Um, and that sort of stemmed out of her doing these sort of things with me. Yes. So, I think that's quite an interesting aspect of it as well. Also, just to pick up on that um, theme of showing practice and having this practice-based library that's media instead of text, um, specifically to to upskill students in very specific techniques, um, you're able to collect everything that you think is important. You don't have to depend on this mediator, which is the library. Yeah, you can just build your collection, and it's I guess the equivalent in the paper world would be you would just put your books on the shelves, and they would be automatically sort of integrated into our collection. But let's not forget the once upon a time these people were teaching these schools to students in studios and now they're doing it on video for these students. I mean, they, they, when I started off a lot, I think no. they were yeah, 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 yeah. They were yeah. fighting to defend their yeah. No. Yeah, well, in a way, the, the, you, you can't do this without a studio. And, um, right. you know, it's... It, this is gone anyway. This hasn't... Uh, this, uh, this actual ceramic studio didn't go because this video got made. It'd be go because the FE, the, the FE, uh, um, you know, they, they reduce the FE sector at UAL, so or section. So, um, yeah, I think I think I think it can be. I, I think it's a case that you know we're either in it or not. I, I think we're better in it or not in it, and, and better uh, getting involved in this. I think the related items is quite interesting because obviously as more content comes on, you get more crossover um, and relation. Of content, and I think the the whole um, you know just to be able to see how you know how these things are being made, and obviously uh, tag clouds are quite interesting. So I think this whole metadata, this whole idea again, what we said earlier about this sort of crowdsourcing of content of of so in a way courses are being developed on here through the metadata because you can click on on certain materials. Do you remember as well that kind of we were talking about? Um because you've got all the different art schools that form. I mean, do you get much more crossover then amongst? Yeah, there's, it, 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 this, is, this is basically answering that question in yeah. regards to crossover. But it's also answering the question that it's, this communication with outside world. And the next thing we want to do is get industry in here. Um, so, just, to, I, I, just to impact, course impact, I'll give you one quick example that's just happened. So, on the South Art Teaching Development Project, uh, a tutor's put his reflection up about uh, using Skype. To do tutorials, uh, which uh, is on here somewhere, and that's been uh, noticed by our student journalist, who's doing a story on Skyping. Uh, they're now talking to the course about implementing Skype as a as a tutorial, um, as as a written into the course that Skype will be a, a tutorial. There'll be X amount of Skype tutorials within the course. So that's real sort of. A sort of round circle uh, impact on, on the course, uh, all that's, and, and that was all done through the student 
noticing the thing on process art, the uh, video that this tutor had made, and obviously the tutor had to make the video in order for him to see it. So there's a whole load of factors there that, that join all that together. I'll, we're just about finished, I'm just going to quickly show you how basically how it works. So log in, you can create an account, so anyone in this room can create an account and add content. And obviously everything's downloadable, so it all comes in downloadable form. Um, so if I was to log in, I'll log in with my standard account. This is where I normally type my password and everyone sees it. <laughs> so, so, so this is basically what it looks like. It's not, it's not a lot different when you're in there, but what you do have is a file browser, which is quite important. So you've almost got your own little repository of images of content. And this is, quite, this is something we're looking at. So we're looking at maybe linking this to Dropbox. So if you are an academic and you move between institutions, you can take all your learning materials with you, because that's what OEL is great for. There's so many aspects of this to develop, and I think this is the, going into an institutional thing will be one of the interesting things. So imagine if you can take all your resources, share them, but also be able to take them when you leave, or when you, or when you go elsewhere. Um, that issue was mentioned very briefly this morning about the institutional ownership of the whole IP. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I find really quite kind of strange because you know, uh, also what was mentioned was that we've got beyond this sort of copyright kind of thing in a way. Um, but you know, um, I, I think that's that's a really important issue for perhaps many people here who are lecturers, you know, paid by an institution that have produced. Yeah. You know, work. Yeah. Okay, it's great you said that because this, this is challenging that. Basically, yeah. it's a challenging yeah, institution. It's, it's really, really and challenging. that's what needs it. It needs to be brought out, it needs to be made understood. So, it's, in, it's on my list of things to do. I'm get, I've already contacted our OMIT, which is our IPR specialist. They've got solicitors. I'm going to give them six scenarios of OER use on here and say, You tell us what the IPR is. And what we'll do is do some simple illustrations and say, Look, well, if you do this and this and this, this is the IPR. And that, that's what, because no one's going to read the IPR, 10 page document. Who's going to read that? Who makes sense of it? So, and so, yeah, we're challenging. And we say, well, you, you make, this make, make this make more sense to people because we need to know. Um, so, contents, again, this is about the profiles. So, this is my Process Arts account, but I've got my, my, my personal account. So, if someone goes to my contents, they can see all my contents, um, which is great. So again, you can just say to people, look at my contents, this is, that's my stuff. Yeah. Um, we've got internal messaging, which is quite a nice way of doing it as well. Uh, so, it create content. If people want to add content, they just go to create content. They can add third party video, obviously if you've embedded, uh, made video elsewhere and embedded it. They can up video, upload video direct, or they can add text and images, or do a sort of bloggy style post. Uh, so they just add a title. They have the, your sort of standard sort of bloggy um, text area, and that goes into your personal repository, browse server, put your images in, whatever. Um, you can put a thumbnail to represent the, the post. Uh, this is the project group, so if you're associated to any group, you can put it in within the group. You're, you're to, again, this is about clustering stuff. This is the way you sort of add disciplines. So if I want to put that in drawing, and then within live drawing or whatever, I can just put it there and I'll click add. And I can add as many disciplines as I want to this post, and again, to make it searchable. I've got a tag cloud, which is really important. File attachments for file, obviously attaching stuff. Creative Commons license. So this is where you choose your license. So I'll say, I want to make this attribution, and that's it. Do you think this should link to a catalog? I mean, do you think that a, a library catalog should be able to find that as easily as it does books? Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, I think there should be as much integration as possible. I think this is the this is the bit that this can't do. I think I think the old institutional embedding can come in time in the right way. But I think what this what this is doing is finding its feet as a practice. I'm wondering if I mean, given that it is open yeah. and people come from different institutions, whether. I'm going in two directions. I mean, if you consolidate with UAL, yeah. but what if other, let's say, London <laughs> universities yeah. um, didn't want to reinvent the wheel yeah. and started using yeah, well, they can, yeah. yeah, they can. And, and, I mean, and, but it, it kind of creates yeah. 
Well, you've got yeah. institutions that way, and yeah. then this new one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a way, that's why we don't want to embed too much in UAM. Yeah. Because we want to keep this as this does its job. This does what it's. I think we've got to wrap Sorry, up. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm just conscious <laughs> that other people have got presentations to do. Oh, Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Session started ten minutes. Oh. I want to say thank you very much, Chris. It's really interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, great. For thank me, you. It was, it was great. And uh, perhaps it's arts, but we can see you do. So brilliant, thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you very much. Well, come and join us on Process Arts if you want to join. Yeah, there's a forum there. And, and uh, what we're trying to do is get debate on the sites and conversations going. And I think, why not? And this is talking about open practice. So there's a whole research section on here about open practice. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you. Thank you.